There is a new uh, treatment modality that is approved, approved in patients with epilepsy in the United States that is deep brain stimulation or what we call DBS. Uh, this uh, technique or this method of stimulating a small area of the brain has been shown in clinical trials to decrease the frequency of seizures over time and in some rare situations to get us, our patients, to be seizure free. Now the big question comes, who would be a very good or a good candidate for the placement of deep brain simulation electrodes? So there is a protocol that we are all uh, following that include the include a, uh, a process that would lead to the selection of these patients. First, let me start to be very clear that the brain stimulation has been approved for an epilepsy to treat those patients as, as adjunctive treatment for these patients who fail multiple anti-epileptic medications. Now, so that is the first criterion in selection and selection of these patients for candidacy for DBS. Second, these patients who, who may be candidate for DBS, we should show that they have focal epilepsy, means an epilepsy coming from a particular area of the brain or multiple areas in the brain. And these patients should have undergone an extensive evaluation what we call a pre-surgical evaluation that would include an MRI to look for possible lesion or lesions that would explain why this patient may have had or may be having these seizures. Second, uh, we may do other studies that would include a PET scan looking for areas what we call hypometabolic areas, an area of dysfunction within the brain. And in some situations they undergo an ictal spect looking for the pathways or the networks that are activated during a seizure and if available mag or magnetoencephalography test that will help us sometime in localizing a three-dimensional space where the epileptic area is. Based on these results a discussion should be held what we call a multidisciplinary patient management conference should be held in the presence of the neurologists, the neurosurgeons, the neuroradiologists, nuclear medicine specialists, MEG specialists, psychologists, psychiatrists, social workers, and discuss all of the data in the context of the patient's history of epilepsy. And based on these, uh, uh, this discussion, there may be various outcomes. First one, the patient should undergo or is cleared to undergo a resective surgery, taking or ablating one part of the brain that is suspected to be the pacemaker of the seizures. Or it could be that the patient needs further evaluation and in this situation intracranial electrodes will be placed. The most commonly used one now in the world is what we call SEEG or stereotactically implanted EEG depth electrodes. And the goal from this is to find out if we can pinpoint further the area of epileptic activity and to assess how safe it is for us to take it out. If the results of this evaluation show a distinct uh, seizure onset area and we show that it is relatively safe to take that particular region, a surgery, a resective surgery will be done. Now, if the patient is deemed to be not a resective surgery candidate, here we start to consider other treatment modalities. One of them would be vagus nerve stimulation. It's been available since the late 1990s in this country with mixed results. Or second one would be responsive neurostimulation which consists of placing an electrode on the area suspected to be the epileptic focus or the pacemaker of the seizures and linking it to a smart recording system linked to a live analysis of the EEG patterns and when the seizure is detected to blast electricity and to try to shut down the seizure activity. And the newest treatment modality that is approved as adjunctive treatment in patients with medically interactable epilepsy is 
deep brain stimulation of a structure that is called anterior nucleus of the thalamus deep inside the brain and the thalamus is like you can think about it as a grand central station it gets information from everywhere in the body and then send it everywhere in the brain and vice versa so therefore this is strategic location to placement of electrodes two electrodes one on the left one on the right to connect actually a one single area from one single area to the rest of the brain and to deliver a repetitive stimulation that would somehow modulate, change the behavior of neurons in the rest of the brain to be better and therefore to make these neurons in the brain less excitable and less prone to fire in uncontrolled manner. That's basically the principle of TBS. Now, uh, what would we expect after placing these electrodes and this, we should expect some decrease in seizure frequency. This is based on the clinical trials. Obviously, we don't have what we call after marketing uh, experience in DBS because it just got approved and it will be launched either this month in December 2018. So uh, we would. Uh, you may ask, what is the, uh, who are the candidates for this? The candidates for this are patients who, are, who failed antiepileptic medication, patients who underwent a pre-surgical evaluation, who are not deemed to be a resective surgical candidate, who are not candidate for responsive neurostimulation. And then now, what would we expect if we implant? We expect a decrease in seizure frequency and in a small number of these patients, they may become seizure-free, which is basically our holy grail. This is our major goal, is to shut down the seizures. Now, an interesting fact about what we learned from the data that was acquired during clinical trials and after the clinical trials, continued to follow these patients. There seems something, they see, there seemed to, something to be happening here in these patients, which is, with time, their seizures get in on a better control, which is the opposite of what we would see with medication. So with time, patients with uh, on the deep brain stimulator, they seem to be getting better. How long is it going to be? We don't know. Is it going to be a continuous process over 5, 10, 15 years? We don't know. But this would give us hope in cases in whom we implant this uh, this device but early on the results are not very encouraging because there is hope that in the future things will get better and we have a neuromodulatory effect that is building up in the brain leading therefore to less excitation and less firing in the brain and therefore less seizures coming from the epileptic focus area